Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to finish our tour of our four most common table derivations inside of DAX. We're going to focus on the all function, this time pointed at a column rather than the entire table. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm here in table derivation.xlsx, and I'm in the derive all call for column uh, tab. So uh, at the beginning, we looked at our respectful derivations, both asking for all the visible rows of a table just by typing in the table's name, or asking for all of the uh, distinct values of a single column that are visible by using the values function. Then we looked a second ago at using the all function pointed at a physical table to get all the rows and columns of a table, ignoring the filters. Now we're gonna use that same function, the all function, but this time we're gonna point it at a single column within a table, which will bring back all the distinct values of that column, but again, ignoring the filters because these are our two non-respectful derivations, right? Uh, now this is gonna seem redundant sort of like the last video because every time we revise the filter, it's gonna have no effect whatsoever on our derivation. And so we're not gonna do a whole bunch of these. We've only got uh, four examples, but I think it's worthwhile practicing. So uh, let's just go ahead and burn through these real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna start by revising the filters. So I'm gonna click on those two cells right there and drag this up right above the shift column and let go. And we're gonna add a filter for shift equals lunch into our filter context. Now, if we were talking about the respectful derivations over here, this would affect how they view the physical tables in the data model. For non-respectful derivations over here, they don't care. So this has no effect on what rows are visible or invisible. So when we use this derivation and to, to get all of the uh, distinct values of the price per column in the mini table visible or not, uh, that's exactly what we're going to get. So let's select all the values in the price per column. Control C to copy. <clears throat> click under the O in hours. Control V to pay special. Uh, click on values and number formats or hit U and then hit OK. And now we want to remove the duplicates, right? So let's head up here to data and remove duplicates and hit OK. All right. And so what, we, what do we end up with? Uh, we, for our price per column, this temp table has $7, $9, and $11. Even though the only $11 item was this salad right here that was bought during dinner, because, uh, because we're using a non-respectful derivation, it's going to ignore this filter for shift equals lunch. Okay, so let's revise the filters one more time. Uh, not like it's going to do anything, but we'll do it anyways. We're going to add a filter for shift equals dinner. So we already have a filter for shift equals lunch. This will replace the existing filter. Click and drag this up to drop it right on top of the old filter. Hit OK to override that old filter, right? And now we're gonna use this non-respectful derivation. Same derivation, right? And because it's a non-respectful derivation, the changes to the filters won't even matter. We want all the values in the price per column of the mini table, visible or not. That's what this derivation is asking for. So let's select all these. The fact that we have a filter for shift equals dinner has no effect on this derivation. Control C to copy. Click under the O in hours, control Alt V to pay special. Click on values and number formats and hit okay. So we get those things right there, but we need to remove the duplicates because that's what the all function does when it's pointed at a column. So we're gonna head up here to data. Click on remove duplicates and hit okay, right? And we end up with seven, nine and 11, even though that $11 item came from a lunch order. Or I should say a dinner order. Actually, in this case, they would be the same. Okay, so let's revise the filters one last time, or two more times, I guess. So now we're gonna add a filter for dish equals burger or salad. We don't currently have a filter for dish. This will not override any existing filters. We'll just add a new one. Select those cells, drag these up here. Drop it right above the dish column, right? And scroll down. Because we're gonna be using a non-respectful derivation here in problem three, it doesn't care about that filter, right? So we want all the values, visible or not, in the price per column in the mini table, uh, removing any duplicates. So let's select these cells one more time. Control C to copy. Click under the O in hours. Control Alt V to pay special. Click on values and number formats, hit OK. And lastly, we wanna remove those duplicates. So head up to here to data. Click remove duplicates and hit OK. All right, one more. I think you know what this is gonna end up with, right? Because no matter how many times we revise the filters because we're using a non-respectful derivation, it's gonna get the same answer. So let's click on those cells right there. We're gonna revise the filters by adding this filter. We already have a filter for lunch, or, um, a filter for shift, I should say. This, so this will replace the existing filter. So click and drag this up and drop it right on top of the old filter. Do you wanna replace it? We certainly do. Hit okay. 
but it ends up not mattering because we're using this all derivation point at a column. It doesn't care about the filters. So we want all the distinct values of the price per column in the mini table, regardless of whether or not they're visible. That's what this derivation does right here. Same one as before, same one as the entire tab. So select those cells, Control C to copy, click under the O and R's, Control Alt V to pay special, click on values and number formats, and click OK. And lastly, we're gonna remove the duplicates. So head up here to data and click remove duplicates and hit OK. And we're all done. So that will produce this temp table right here. And similar to uh, before with the all physical table, uh, you may be asking, why would I ever wanna do this? In a minute, we're going to start creating our own override filters to add to the temp table. Up until now, uh, I've either had you hit buttons up here or just click and drag cells. Eventually, you're going to have to use code to generate those temp tables that get added to the filter context, right? And we're gonna use this all derivation to generate all the values visible or not so that we could uh, create a new filter that includes things that aren't currently visible. Because let's just say that you're looking at lunch and you want to pivot to look at lunch and dinner. Well, you're going to need to create or start with a derived temp, temp table that has both of those values in order to create that override. Okay, well, that finishes up our tour of our derivations, the most common ones. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at some sort of quarter cases and some things to think about when we're doing these derivations.